seven. people said Amen. you may be seated at this time if all the children will please come forward for their time with Karen as uh, she feeds the lamb come on forward you royal princesses and princes and come on up here have a seat y'all look so royal awesome Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. We're just multiplying, multiplying, and multiplying. Okay. What we're going to do before we even begin, I want to tell y'all a secret without them knowing, okay? I see that. I see you, Alex. You look awesome. Okay, that was my secret for them. We are going to recognize, before we even do the celebration up here, the teachers that have taught in the children's ministry in the past. I just felt like God wanted us to do that. So if you have taught in the children's ministry at all in the past, please stand up. We want to honor you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, ready? One, two, three. All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. Thank you. It's important to say thank you, isn't it? Yes. All right, what in the world is the word inauguration? What does that mean? That is a big old word that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. And you know what it means? It means a special celebration, a day set apart to show people how special someone is. So that's what this day is for you all. We are going to have an inauguration. So what I would like for you to do is to go to the pews and to kneel. Huh? If you would go to the altar and kneel. If parents could help me, somebody. 
Anybody help me? I'm being, just turn, you guys turn and have a seat. You guys go over there. Let's go to the altar. And we're going to pray. And your pastor and I are going to crown you for the royal people that you are. All right? If you already have a tear, we are going to lay hands on you. Okay. Princess, Princess Annabelle, we crown you as a follower of Jesus. And we thank you for coming to the royal kingdom. Princess Maddie, we crown you as a princess of Jesus. Yes, but we crown you, Espen, as part of the royal family. Olivia, we crown you beautiful princess that you are, part of the royal family. John, Ryan, I always supposed to say John Martin. John Martin, I'm so glad you're here. John Ryan, I still did it. We crown you, prince, part of the royal family, here at East Stone Gap. Woo, that's a, that's gonna be a necklace. <laughs> it's all right, yeah. Jacob, we crown you, a prince, part of the royal family at East Stone Gap. Megan, the pretty princess that you are, we crown you as part of the royal family at East Stone Gap. Jalen, that's right. Jalen, we crown you as a royal princess, part of East Stone Gap. Braylon, right? Braylon, we crown you as a princess in the royal family of East Stone Gap. Jonah, we crown you as a princess in the royal family of East Stone Gap. Um, Julie, we crown you as a princess in the royal family of East Stone Gap. Isn't this awesome? Yeah. Alex, we crown you <laughs> as a <laughs> prince in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Kate, we crown you as a prince in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Sam, we crown you as a prince in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Rachel, we crown you as a princess in the royal family of East Stone Gap. Lily, We crown you as a princess in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Jill looks like my twin today. And we crown you as a beautiful princess in the family at East Stone Gap. Timmy, we crown you as a crown, as a king and a prince in the family, the royal family at East Stone Gap. Sarah, pretty princess. We crown you as a princess in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Ela, we crown you as a prince in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Josie, we crown you as a beautiful princess in the family at East Stone Gap. Thank you, Ela, for helping your sister. Haley, we crown you as a beautiful princess in the family at East Stone Gap. Oh, such a good team. Drake, Drake, we crown you as a mighty prince in the royal family of East Stone Gap. K Casey, we crown you as a beautiful princess in the royal family at East Stone Gap. Rachel, we crown you as a beautiful princess in the family at East Stone Gap. McKenna, sorry, McKenna, that's right. McKenna, we crown you as a beautiful princess 
and the royal family of East Stone Gap. Brady, Brayley, sorry, Brayley, you're a beautiful girl, and we crown you as the beautiful princess in the family of East Stone Gap. Logan, we crown you as a royal prince in the family of East Stone Gap. Peyton, we crown you as a mighty warrior and prince in the family of East Stone Gap. Talia, I keep wanting to say Malia. You know me. Talia, you are beautiful, and we crown you as a beautiful princess of East Stone Gap. Mm -hmm. We'll get him one downstairs. Cole, we crown you as a mighty warrior and a prince at East Stone Gap. Ricky G, we're going to get you a crown downstairs. downstairs. <laughs> And we crown you as a beautiful and awesome mighty warrior in the royal family of East Stone Gap. Tommy. No. Skylar, you are a beautiful princess. And we crown you in the name of Jesus to the royal family of East Stone Gap. All right, you guys, turn around. Can you go ahead and turn the music on? <clears throat> we are going to march out to our song each time we come. In and out, we'll be marching out to this song. So I'm going to lead. And before we go, we're just going to pray. Father God, y'all pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this time. Help us to remember how much you love us, Jesus, and how precious we are. In Jesus' name, I need a big amen. Oh, my goodness. One more amen. You ready? Amen. Oh, all right. Down to the children's king's kingdom. Little hands, shoeless feet, lonely eyes looking back at me. Let's give God another hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, today, following the worship service, we would encourage you to go downstairs uh, and, you know, uh, uh, make sure you get your children first. But uh, everyone, please go ahead and go downstairs and look at the King's Kingdom. It's absolutely amazing. I just want to encourage you to go and, and see uh, the hard work and uh, of those who've been doing this. So we just give God praise for that. Let's, let's, let's pray for that. Let's, let's ask God to bless this ministry. Lord God, we um, are embarking in a, in a new area. And Lord, we want every child to understand and know who they are in Christ Jesus. Lord, that they are royalty. And so, Lord, we just pray for the teachers. We pray for this ministry, Lord, and just ask that it would multiply. And Lord, we would see children be born again and come into the kingdom of God and love you with our whole heart. May we be good stewards, Lord, over that which you've given to us. And, Lord, we bless this ministry now in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every 
tongue confess that Jesus Christ is. Sing, He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He's my Lord and my knee. And my knee shall. God, as we have entered into this place, we declare that you are the King of kings. We declare that you are the one that has the two-edged sword coming out of your mouth. And one day you will come riding on a white horse. And on your side it will be written, King of kings and Lord of lords, and your robes shall be dipped in blood. We declare that you are seated right now at the right hand of God the Father Almighty forever making intercession for us. We declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we declare, Lord, that your kingdom will come and that your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray now, Lord, that the anointing would fall upon me as I preach and proclaim the good news. That it would fall upon your people as they hear and experience the word. And Lord, may we understand who we are this day. That we're called to follow the King and enter into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you can imagine the confusion that took place at the time of Ahab, the time of Elijah, at the time of Jezebel. At this point, a servant is appointed by the prophet to go and, and speak to the king, Jehu, or the king to be, and, and declare and anoint him that he was to be king. In that, confusion was destroyed, and the people came together, and they began to follow the king, and, and Jehu raised up, and he became the king of the nation of Israel. I want you to think about that this morning because there is one that has been anointed and his name is Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords. And because of that, now it's time for us to, to literally take up our garments and begin to follow Him and begin to walk in His kingdom. There's an old Negro spiritual that goes like this. I'm going to walk in the kingdom, Lord. I'm going to walk in the kingdom, Lord. I'm getting tired of traveling down this lonesome road. I'm going to walk in the kingdom, Lord. Now today, we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about the fact that Jesus Christ has been anointed. And you say, now when did that take place? It took place when Jesus was 30 years old and the heavens opened and God said, this is my beloved son. And just as the oil was pointed, poured upon Jehu, the Spirit of God came down upon Jesus and from that moment he was ordained as priest, prophet, and king, king of the universe, king of all things, the soon and coming king that will come again. Somebody in this house, come on, y'all. And because of that, Jesus Christ was anointed and and from that moment, people began to gird up their loins. They began to follow him wherever he went and declare that he was the king, that he was the Messiah, that he was the Lord of Lords. Now, as we look at Scripture, there are certain things that must take place for you and I to enter in with the king, into the king's domain. And first of all is that we must understand that he has been anointed that He has been separated, that He has been set apart. And Jesus Christ 
was anointed by the Most High God to become the, the Savior of all mankind. But also He was anointed to be the King that we would follow Him and enter into the same kingdom that He, that he entered into. And it was the king's domain. And wherever the king resides is the king's domain. Now, the bad news is this, folks. Is that when Adam and Eve fell, all the earth fell with it. They literally surrendered all that belonged to them. You see, when God created Adam, God said, take dominion. Everybody say dominion. dominion. And then he said, and multiply. But literally, God gave Adam total and all authority. Now, I'm going to mess with you a little bit this morning because most of us are just simply here thinking that we need to get saved so that we can go to heaven. That's not the whole purpose that Jesus Christ came back. Jesus Christ came back to earth, first of all, that you could be saved, but from that moment you could be born again and enter into the king's domain. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. That is the starting point. Now we're not talking about heaven. We are talking about the kingdom of God. And you must be born again to enter into the very presence and the glory of God that it would rest upon you and from that moment you would do the same things that Adam did as well as the same things that Jesus did that you would decree and declare that you would speak in the name of Jesus and that God would answer your prayers and it's through that that you've been given authority as a son and daughter of the Most High God. You see now the enemy has tried to steal all this from us. But I got news for, this, for you this morning. You have royal DNA flowing through your veins. You are a child of the Most High God. There's a video I want you to watch. I want you to hear this. Y'all ready? Go ahead and put that video on for me. Turn it up. Of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder, do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. 
I want to talk to you about entering into the kingdom and entering into the king's domain. <clears throat> How do we enter in? Jesus says he was approached by Nicodemus. He, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again to enter into it. Jesus answered him, verily, verily, I say to you, except a man or woman be born again, they cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, for many of us, we have been taught that that's referring to heaven. But according to Romans, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We're talking about a different lifestyle, a different realm that you and I are called to live in live uh, you know it's not time for us to go to heaven yet I'm still here and I need to learn how to live while I'm here walking and breathing and living this life and so Jesus tells us that we've got to be born again in order that you and I can learn how to live righteous how that you and I can learn how to, to live in peace and and enjoy in this life in the Holy Spirit this is what we're called to do as believers now uh, it's like when you're born again before you're living in one reality, but when you're born again, all of a sudden you have an awareness that there is a king. And you come into his domain and you begin to live in his authority. And as you do that, you begin to have a, a way of righteousness in your life. To, to, to live righteous means to be in right alignment. Everybody say right alignment. Everybody hold your hands up. Bring them down. Right alignment. Now, when you get out of alignment, it's, it's when you begin to stray, but God calls us to live in right alignment with Him. Now, that's when you and I enter in, and we enter into this right relationship. From that, we begin to have peace, and we begin to have joy in our life. This is what God wants us to have is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, the Word of God also says this, that, that we, we enter in, we must enter in as a little child. Everybody say a little child. A little child. Say it again. A little child. A little child. You know, as, as a small child, we have a bunch of children, they're downstairs. But have you ever notice a child's faith? You can tell them something and they will believe it. Just like that. They have so much trust. But something happens to us over a period of time through life. Some people may try to show you something or tell you something, but it's hard for you to believe it. You're going to say, well, prove it to me. To enter the kingdom of God, we must maintain a childlike faith. A faith that is not corruptible, where we simply are stepping out on things that we do not know or we do not understand. We simply trust the Father. You see, that's the kingdom of God. We're walking in what we do not know, nor do we understand. We just simply walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by what we do not see, and we do not allow, allow what we do see determine that which God wants to show Amen. us. Too many of us are worldly Christians. We want to walk by what we're seeing rather than walking in the supernatural and seeing as God sees. Is anybody here this morning? We're also told that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness 
and then all these things shall be added. So it's the kingdom of God that you and I should be seeking above everything else. First, everybody say first. first. The kingdom of God. What is it that we're seeking? What is it that we're, we're really looking for while we are on this journey in this life? We're called to seek the kingdom. We're called to seek the presence, the power, the anointing of Jesus Christ. The disciples, as uh, they were experiencing the resurrected Lord, uh, uh, Jesus was getting ready to ascend into heaven. And they said, Lord, tell us when you will come into your kingdom. They were, they were still trying to figure out what the kingdom was. And as Jesus was having this conversation, he told them to go to Jerusalem that they might receive power after the Holy Spirit came upon them. That they would be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus was talking to them about the kingdom of God, and yet in the same breath, he began to talk to them about the fullness of the presence of God being involved in their life. Is anybody here? Punch your neighbor and say, wake up. Say, I'm seeking the kingdom. Go ahead and do that. This is what we're called to seek first, but what does that really mean? It means the very presence, the very power, the very anointing of God in our lives. That we would walk rightly, and as we do that, then we can have peace and joy in the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's the kingdom of God. Outside the kingdom of God, what does that mean? That you do not have peace, you do not have joy, and you're not in right standing. It's that simple. So we're to seek God's presence, God's anointing, His kingdom in our lives. Listen, that His kingdom may come, that His will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. You cannot accomplish the kingdom of God on this earth without the presence of God. And as we seek it first, why? So that the will of God can be accomplished here. Seeking His presence. Seeking His power. Seeking His anointing. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, the thing about this, this is God's plan from the very beginning. When God created Adam, He told him what? Take dominion. It was lost. It was forfeited. And God devised a plan, I need to restore this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let this first Adam be put aside, and I'm going to send a second Adam, and he's going to be without sin, he's going to be spotless, and when he comes, I'm going to show them how to live the life that I've called them to live. Jesus just did not come to save us, he came to show us how to live on this earth. He came to show us how to call down heaven and walk in a spiritual atmosphere where everything around him changed. And beloved, you and I are called to that exact same thing that we call things that are not as though they were and we enter into a spiritual realm and we see the very power and presence of God as he answers us when we call upon his name. I'm about ready to preach and y'all just looking at me this morning. Come on, hallelujah. Who's in this house? This is who we are. Some of us have forgotten that we are children of the Most High God. Amen. That we are sons and daughters, the very same DNA that God placed in Adam. We have been created in the image of God. Even the angels cannot say this. The angels cannot say that, that we have been created in the image of God. Only you can say that. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've been created in God's Im image. Y'all not convincing me. Go ahead and do it again. That's who you are. And that which was lost has been restored when you asked Jesus Christ to come into your life. Something took place in the Spirit. It's called bloodletting. The blood of Jesus was sprinkled across your conscience. You may not have seen it. You may have not have felt it. But in the Spirit, something was taking place as the blood of the Lamb was applied to your life. And from that moment, you were adopted and engrafted in and you became sons and daughters of God. Woo! Help us, Jesus. How can y'all just sit there? Eat the foam out of that chair. Come on, y'all.
This is who we are. And somehow the enemy has come and he has uh, uh, come into our hearts and our minds and we have allowed him to steal the very fact that we are children of God. And so we walk around totally defeated. We walk around not knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Not realizing that we are royalty. Now, this morning, you see how I'm dressed outwardly, but beloved, this is how all of us look inwardly in the Spirit. We're royalty. PD, you're royalty. How about that? Wow. (laughs) Say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're royalty. You're royalty. Get that. But we have walked around defeated, not knowing who we are. At the age of four, I was taken from my original parents. The reason I was taken was because of neglect. They would leave me three and four days at a time with a loaf of bread on the floor and water. I had a two-word vocabulary at the age of five. Listen to what I'm saying. I would say dad or mama. That was the only two words that I knew. That was it. I weighed two pounds when I was born. I got a scar here and a scar back here. And I was at St. Mary's Hospital and they had given me up and my parents just fully neglected me because my father was a chronic alcoholic and my mother had done so many drugs in her life that she was mentally incompetent. They would leave me three and four days at a time at a home by myself that had no running water. We had a coal box that was in the creek. You know what the creek is, right? The creek. And we would put things in there to keep them cold. That, that's all that there was. That's all that I had. There was no running water in the house. And, and so uh, we didn't have bathrooms. So you would go out in the backyard and, and literally use the bathroom like a dog. As I was raised in the hills of Gatlinburg and Sevierville. Because my dad was a moonshine runner. That's what he did. On my hands today I have scars. On my legs I have scars from where I was beaten by my father. Not only was I physically beaten, but I was sexually hurt as well. I was passed, taken from that home. Passed from foster home to foster home. But when the police showed up to take me, my father pulled out a gun and began to fire the gun at the police and the police of course began to fire back I was so nervous I crawled up underneath the bed on on the floor and, and I was hiding and my father in his rampant drunk at rampant stage turns and pulls the gun pulling the trigger barely missing me and I was so scared that my own urine went across the floor They finally took me out of that home and they placed me in foster care. And when I was placed in foster care, as I said, all I knew was two words. And I remember the lady of this foster home reaching up into the refrigerator and pulling out, and I didn't even know what a refrigerator was, but pulling out an ice cream sandwich. I'd never had an ice cream sandwich before in my life. I just inhaled it. Oh, can I get it in as fast as I can? I'd never tasted anything like that before in my life. And as soon as the social worker pulled out of the driveway, that same woman reached up on the refrigerator and began to beat me with a yardstick. They ended up putting me in another home and then then into another home. Came to start living with the rights. The rights ended up let me change my name or I took a name because it was causing so much confusion in my own heart and life because I couldn't understand who I was and what was going on. And finally at the age of 14, I was adopted into the family and I got a new name. But my whole life I was told that I would never amount to anything. I would never succeed in life. 
You see, that's what the world was trying to dictate to me. They said, you have a learning disability. You have all these different things. I said, no, I, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to press on. I graduated uh, from college with a 3.76. I'm not here glorifying me. I want to talk to you about what Jesus did. Everyone said, you will never succeed in life, but something got a hold of me when I turned, uh, when I turned 17 years of age the glory and the presence of God came in the room and that same DNA that was in Christ Jesus all of a sudden came inside of me. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now was living and dwelling inside of me. And the world said, you will not amount to anything, but God says, you're a prince, you're a king. I have a purpose for your life. And now I have the most awesome job on the planet. I get to preach and proclaim as a prince, as, as a king of the kings. Why? Because now his, his royal DNA is flowing through my veins. And because there was a time when I became born again and I stopped walking in the natural and I said, I choose to walk in the supernatural. I choose to follow the direction that God is calling me. Amen. Now I see signs and wonders. Now I see heaven come to earth. Some of y'all looking for heaven. I'm not looking for heaven right now. I've got a job to do. You've got a job to do. And as we're here, we need to walk in the king's domain. We need to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We need to see the dead come back to life. We need to, we need to see people being born again. We need to see people baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, that's what we've been called to do. Some of y'all are just natural Christians. Oh, bless God, hallelujah. I'm barely making it. I'm just getting by, getting through, getting on. How are we doing this morning? Everybody say, I love my pastor. Love my pastor. I'm not convinced. Say it again. I love my pastor. All right. You see, to enter the kingdom, there must be that born again experience. To enter into that supernatural realm, you can't. And born, being born again is just the starting point. Listen to what I'm saying. Some people think being born again that you've arrived. Being born again means that you've been declared a son, a daughter, a king, a prince of the Most High God. And from that moment, you're able to pray and declare and ask and see the Father at work among you. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, it shall be done. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Some of y'all are so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Oh, bless God, I'm just born again. I just need to get to heaven. I've got my fire insurance and my life insurance is paid up and I just need Jesus to come back and take me home. I got news for you. There is work to be done here. There are people that are lost. There's people that need the hand of God. And you're the ones that need to minister to them. I'm about ready to preach. Where are you? Where are you this morning? Turn to the book of Psalms with me. Psalms chapter 115. That was my introduction. Y'all ready? <laughs> we have a misunderstanding in the body of Christ. We think that the reason we're saved is so that we can go to heaven. The reason that you're saved is so that you can do the work of Jesus here on this earth. That you can be the priest, a royal priest of the holy nation of the pure people. Now, everybody say heaven, heaven. Belongs, to God. belongs to God. Earth, Earth. Belongs, to us. belongs to us. 
God is not saving you to take you to heaven. He's saving you so that you can take your dominion over this earth. Look at Psalm 115. Look at verse 14 with me. May the Lord give you increase more and more. You and your children, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Who made heaven and earth? Everybody say God. God. Heaven and earth. That's what he made. Now look what it says here. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. So the heavens belong to the Lord. It says, but the earth he has given to the children of men. And this is what the enemy does not want us to know or understand. And then while we're here, we are to be taking dominion over the earth. If we're walking the king's kingdom, it means that you and I should have dominion and authority wherever we walk. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a son, a daughter, amen, of the Most High God. That's who you are. Now, if the heavens belong to him, the earth belongs to us, that's why it says whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We have been given authority here to walk and talk and believe the word and act it out as as we're here upon this planet. Isn't that good? Everybody say hallelujah. Some of y'all have not exercised enough authority to make the devil choke on a nap. Amen? Amen? The Word of God says, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, it has to go. You have been given authority. You have been given dominion. You are an ambassador of the Most High God, representing Him here on this earth because you're in right standing. And because you're in right standing, there's joy and peace in your life as you're taking authority over the enemy. Who's anybody here this morning? This is a true story. There was a lord or a sir that was in England who passed away. When he passed away, all those that worked for him were given letters and dismissed. And uh, one was a a, a chief maid that worked for him for almost her whole life, was taken into service at a very early age and worked for him her whole life. The newspaper in England began to look and search for this woman and uh, where she was she ended up going to the streets. She had no place to go. The only thing she knew was working in service of the king but what happened was she ended up going and living in the streets even in cardboard boxes. And There was one reporter that went looking for her, found her and when they found her uh, she had an envelope and he said let me see what's in the envelope and inside the envelope there was a great inheritance that had been left to her, but the problem was she could not read or write, so she did not know what rightfully belonged to her. And she was living as a pauper. You get where I'm going? You and I, for so long, have been living as as paupers because we have not realized the authority that's been given to us to live as as Christ would have us live. Turn, Turn to your neighbor and say, help us, Jesus. Everybody say, I must be born again. I must enter as a child. I must seek it above all else. I need the kingdom of God. Everybody say, I'm a son or daughter of the Most High God. I have royal blood flowing through my veins. Amen. Can y'all give God some praise this morning? Lord Jesus, we do give you praise and adoration that your word is alive and it's true. Lord, just as Jehu did not understand who he was and he'd been anointed, Lord, you've anointed us. Anointed us as kings and queens. And Lord, you're coming back. And when you come back, your government shall be established. And Lord, you will rule and reign here for a thousand years. 
And as you rule and reign, Lord, we will have resurrected bodies and we'll be ruling and reigning here on this earth with you. Lord, and how we live our lives now, Lord, you're watching us. You're watching us. Lord, you want us to live as your kids, as your kings and your queens upon this earth. Lord, help us realize that we have been anointed and we must enter in in Jesus' name. Lord, there may be those that are here this morning that need to be born again, that need to start a life anew and fresh in your presence. Lord, that need joy, need peace, need the very presence of God, need to be in right standing with you. Lord, we just pray that the anointing of God would rest upon them and bring conviction even now, Lord, to where they would ask you to come into their heart and their life. Maybe, maybe there are those this morning, Lord, that are here that have walked with you for a period of time. But Lord, they have forgotten who they are. They've forgotten that they are kings and queens, that they are royalty. And so Lord, as we gather here now, Lord, let, let us be reminded of that. Maybe those that are here that need to take authority over situations in their life to speak to them. And Lord, see you work on their behalf. Lord, we give you praise and adoration. We ask now that you would come and be among them. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. People are going to be coming to the altar because I believe that this is a time that God wants us to pray together. A hymn is going to be, I Surrender All. If you feel led to come and stand behind someone and just gently pray for them as they're here at this altar, I encourage you to do that. If you're here and you say, I need to get, ask Jesus Christ into my heart, I just want you to raise your hand, and I or someone will be glad to come and pray with you so that you can give your heart and your life to Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn together. 354, I Surrender All. to you and I want you to pray for them. Ask them if there's anything that needs to be taken authority over and uh, let's just agree and pray. I'm going to ask that you continue to play as we're praying. Go ahead and continue to play. Let's just take authority in Jesus name. Lord Jesus now we just take authority in the name of Jesus for our friends, for people that we're close to. Lord asking now Lord that you would move on their behalf. Lord, that you would move in the circumstances that life has presented them. 
Lord, let them know that you care, that, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that you're on the throne of heaven. And Lord, we just now take authority and we agree together uh, for these circumstances and these situations, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we decree and declare that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We dec decree and declare, Lord, that we have royal blood flowing through our veins. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that every place the sole of our feet shall tread, it shall belong to us in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that we shall put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, that we shall have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that we shall have our loins girded with truth, that we shall take up the sword of the Spirit in the name of Jesus and the shield of faith, but above all that we shall put on the under undergarment of love in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, now we decree and declare that we are sons and daughters, royalty in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. amen. Give Him some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. 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 Without the music, just sing this. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Sing that again very softly. God, we thank you. Now as we leave this place, there are those that need to encounter your presence. There are those who need to enter into the kingdom. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask that we go forth preaching, proclaiming, ministering your grace and your love. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, and all God's people said,